So I just finished reviewing everyone's project proposals and I've had the opportunity to speak with a few of you one-on-one -on -one regarding your project proposals for the semester. Um, and I just want to take a moment to kind of recap a few things. One of the common themes that always develops in this class um, and has certainly developed so far in this class is a need for specificity. Uh, so. So being specific, uh, one, is very difficult. And I'm going to take a moment to kind of explain why that might be. Um, but, you know, as far as contextualizing your ideas and then being able to make successful art or design from them, it's, it's a pretty important thing. Um, and this is where at the beginning of the semester I discussed, you know, a lot of artists and designers when using words to describe what it is that they do or what it is that they want to do, they hide behind fluff speak. Um, now that's a, not an official term, but by fluff speak, uh, what I mean is it's, very, it's language that's used very vaguely. Um, there's really no specifics that can anchor a thought or direct the viewer, reader, or listener to anything that is uh, nameable. Um, and this is a desirable way to speak or to write as an artist because it kind of frames everything as being open to interpretation. Which, yes, art and design often is, but we know very specifically that uh, the ideas that were driving, say, Jean Valjean Basquiat were remarkably different than, I don't know, Mark Rothko, right? Being able to specifically label where your interests are helps guide the types of work that you will make. It helps decisions be more easy and more clear. Uh, so specificity... Um, and the ability to label your interests is really helpful. Now, one of the major benefits of that I have found personally in my own, own studio practice, uh, when I learned to be specific with the project idea um, and really drive to the core central theme or thesis of what it is that I was wanting to create or, uh, you know, express or experiment with is it helped me simplify my terms and it helped me know exactly what type of research I needed to conduct. Research for an artist uh, is not standardized. Some of you in this class uh, I have been pushing to learn about you know like physics right some some science stuff uh, some of you I have been pushing to read about specifics within psych psychology, some branches of philosophy. Um, some of you I'm asking to essentially journal because your work is highly personal and it's important for you to know the specifics of your own narratives and your own histories. Whereas a few of you I'm, I'm asking you to research into uh, the themes that you're wanting to explore, like social groups that are very, very different from your own, um, or potentially, you know, someone in this class is really interested in maybe exploring a theme of gang life, but they've never been in one, right? So it's important to learn about that from sources that are reliable and, and trusted, not hypothetical and made up. Um, so... If you can specifically label what it is that you're interested in, you will know how to, or based on that specific labeling, you will know where to look for influences, inspiration, context, um, and those things matter. Now, um, once you have developed your inspiration, context, and, and con uh, I guess your overall arcing theme, then you'll know what to make that fits within this idea and you know from that the the process of the research the process of the making all of this will help develop the way you 
understand that work. Um, and be it made clear, art and design is a practice-based research, right? Um, and, you know, I'm not asking you with these project proposals to know everything about your ideas before you make them. I'm just really asking you to know what direction are you about to go and why, right? Uh, without knowing why, um, it's very easy to get lost. As the semester progresses, after you have made a substantial body of work, then I will be asking you to reflect upon what you have made. So you have your proposal, which is, I will be making this. That's flexible, right? Because if you make one thing and based on what you made, you learn that you might want to go a new direction, that's definitely permissible. Um, so your project proposal is simply your launching point. After you've made a significant body of work, uh, you'll reflect upon it. And that's where you actually do your project statement. Meaning, you look at all the work, you understand, one, by making, two, by doing research, um, what has been done and what actually has been explored. And then you can successfully write about that. Um, now, language, again, I've, I've talked with most of you, it's, it's a fairly difficult thing for artists to, to function with. But the reality is language is how our world functions. If you want people to be able to engage with your work, you will have to lean on language. The work alone will not be able to get you an exhibition. It will not be able to get you the design contract or the movie contract or whatever it is that your goals are as a designer or an artist. Um, you will need to use language to contextualize your work for essentially getting the doors open so that you can actually have people look at your work. Um, now, in order to open up the doors, you cannot just throw around these loose terms that sound very interesting, but leave a viewer, a potential gallerist, or in this case an instructor, loving the ideas, but still having no clue what it is that you're proposing. So this is where, like, throw your ideas around, be very specific with them, and try and understand it. Once you've labeled that, learn what you can, everything you can about the idea. Sorry, my uh, video froze. Anyways, so learn everything that you can about the work, and then from there we'll develop the language around it. Now, um, my, my argument for specificity is that if you cannot be specific, often that's an indicator that you don't know what you're talking about. That's pretty harsh, but it's fairly accurate. Now, Einstein was uh, often said that if... Airplane. Um, okay. Einstein often said that if you cannot explain your idea to a third grader, um, you don't know what you're talking about. I think that's true for an artist. Um, I would maybe reframe it a different way. Art, because it functions very differently than like physics, physicist language does. Um, it might be better to say if you cannot explain your ideas and your work to maybe a third grader, but potentially maybe your grandma or great grandma, um, you don't know what you're talking about. Thinking about our grandmas and great grandmas, they have a very specific association that is historically based as to what art and design is. And in order to get them up to speed with this crazy new stuff that we're doing now, right? With new technologies, new techniques, new visual forms. Um, if we cannot explain our ideas, 
then to a viewer, a listener, a gallerist, a reader, you running the risk of coming across as that person who's just willy nilly pushing paint around on a canvas and hiding behind fluff speak, speak saying that this is the expression of my emotions, right? No offense, that's been done. And since it's been done a long time ago, let's build on it. What can that develop into? How can you specifically use it? Now, no one in this class is trying to make random abstract expressionistic painting. That's why I use that as my low-hanging fruit bar. Um, but I think it will be important for you to learn how to be specific with your language. Now, some of that is your ideas, right? Kind of belabored that point to, an, uh, to a T or to a fault. Um, but also materials. Like if you throw out all of these identity claims, but you don't tell us what specifically you're making, right? I'm making photography of people. Well, now I know what to think about when I'm reading these really complicated ideas. And I can think about what potential visuals I might encounter as a result of these ideas. And maybe I can approach these ideas on a personal level, thinking about my own personal identity and my own personal appearance. So I think specifics will help you. They will not hinder. They are difficult to get to. It forces us to know ourselves, to know our work, and to actually do the work to research and understand the context that we're claiming to be interested in. So, all of that to say, well done. If we need to have one-on-one -on -one meetings to develop these ideas further, for me to further contextualize what this is, um, let me know. Otherwise, thank you for enjoying or listening to or becoming frustrated by my soapbox and my ramblings. Keep up the good work, y'all.